morning airsoft fans and welcome to another another airsoft video for me paraplays and today we're going back up to Selby now this time I've got some new kit some new clothing some peltos I'm actually thank you I'm actually going to be using the Warthog so I'm actually going to be using a different rifle today Red Dot a bit more of an assault class and as with most videos I've been doing recently it's absolutely blooming freezing it was actually I almost had to scrape the ice off the windscreen this morning so it's gonna be a cold one today so let's crack on down to well, you be quiet let's crack on down to proving grounds at Yorkshire pinball and let's smash some noobs so here we are down at proving grounds which is probably by the sound of it gonna end up gonna be my local regular airsoft meet and fortunately today was just full of one disaster after another and I'll go through some of the problems I had today and how I could have avoided some of the problems actually but uh, in the meantime let's have a little look around at the check-in and some of the people and get ready to get out on the field and there's Big Dave Dave D what, what we're checking all the best people in the world wear those jackets well, exactly What's, uh, what we're checking out today then we're just fixing the hop unit, which we've now fixed. Now it works beautifully. Is that an Ares M4? It is. Is that the same as one I've got? It is. Well, 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 why does yours look so much more Gucci? Jacket buddies. Yeah, no excuses now. <laughs> yeah. Right, where's the rest of the mob? Round and about. Morning. Morning. <laughs> well, I was looking at the guns, guns, guns. Nice. Yeah, I do. I do quite a few um, airsoft videos. Now, despite all the new clothing I got, I got some new trousers, shirt. You know how airsoft is. It's like crack cocaine. Once you've dipped your toe in or your nose in, that's it. You're addicted and you want more and more kit and everything's Gucci and you like the look of this and you like the look of that. And Anyway, so me, Steve and Dave, we decided to get some of these Bofang. Bofang PV82s, I think they are, or UV82s. And did we know how to use them? Did we chuff? And one of the lads here says, well, I know how to set this up for you. And we actually ended up using these with the cheap nasty little earpiece that comes with them and it's got a microphone on it but it's got two PTTs on it which is push to talk and you have to press one of them for three seconds otherwise it flicks over to the other one they've got they've got a range of six foot crap Chinese it's got to go back <laughs> might as well stand next to each other <laughs> now the problem is when you're out in the field with your uh, gloves on and your headset and everything else on you can't tell which is up and down because the clips come off all the time. They're just a nightmare. So constantly, all we heard today was, Steve, Steve, Dave, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Dave? Is this working? Hello, anybody there? And it just became absolute garbage. So I think now that we've got the decent contacts, which I'll do a video review on uh, at some point, need to get the proper ones with a nice large PTT because it'll just get rid of all that trouble and hassle of trying to talk to each other out in the field. That's Dave's gun. I bought it off Dave a couple of weeks ago. I've, I've owned that. Have you? Yeah. It's a slut of a gun then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, well, well, I know it's fine anyway. Yeah, I could do. Nick will do it. Apparently a few people have owned this gun, not just Dave. He bought it off the big lad up there. Okay, now look at this man. So after our obligatory chrono testing, making sure that everybody's safe, you know all this stuff already, but I'll go through it anyway. We're going to move through now to the staging area, which is where we have our photographs taken by a big ginger stew who works up at patrol base. And in front of me, this grey-haired fella here, that's Andy, and he owns Yorkshire Paintball, which is where we're actually at today for proving grounds. So yeah, we're going to move through now, and the weather before we all came out here, by the time everybody chronoed was absolutely pissing it down. And I mean, it was selling it down, and then it sort of, it sort of went into a slight drizzle, and it was on and off all day long. But it didn't stop the people who love airsoft actually coming out today. Supposedly, there was 85 people on the field, which is a lot of players. And it also, well, it, it kind of depends. There was action to be had throughout today. You didn't have to go that far to get it, but you could look on the other side and say, did it give you many opportunities for being stealthy? It really was kind of a mix today, and I know the first objective 
a lot of people started to run, which was the bridge, it's the big white castle thing looking at the end, and our team just sort of like waltzed up <laughs> like, like it ain't no thing. And the other team, blue team, absolutely dominated on defence, and there was absolutely no way we could actually get anywhere near it, so hats off to them for that. Three, two, one, the Warthog, the M4 Warthog that I'm actually using in this game is the first time I've used this. I bought it off somebody up at patrol base, Dave who works there, and it's brilliant. It's a completely different feeling to playing with a, the, I'll class it as the assault weapon rather than the DMR range. You can get a little bit up close. It uh, certainly churned out the BBs when it was on full auto, but unfortunately for me, I had some problems today with this little teething problem, shall we say. It uh, kept it, cut, it kept stop firing uh, on the second mag all the time, and it became really, really frustrating. It turns out that it was something to do with the MOSFET. MOSFET? MOSFET. Every time I pulled the trigger, the red light came on, and it was just... That was it. For the rest of the day, this was out of play, which was a real shame because it really was a great rifle to use in a different role than what I've actually been playing in usually as the DMR. Yes! 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 Fucking do it. These little trenches I found were just fantastic for sneaking around on the enemy and getting a brilliant flank in. And what I decided to do for this clip was the, the, the enemy at the start had run and got on this bridge which we had to take or, or capture and hold. And I decided to go gung-ho because Usually in the DMI role, you're further back, you're getting in a you know prone position and you're taking pot shots. So I decided I was going to run and charge in, and as you, as you can probably tell in the next video clip, I didn't get very far. But hey oh, it's a train that counts. And you'll actually hear the enemy as I get further up towards the bottom of the ramp there, shouting, enemy coming round, or something along those lines. As you can see on screen, I decided to put these tapes around my mags, not to look Gucci, not for any other purpose, that it's quite easy to drop your mags. Even when you think you've put them in your vest, it can be quite hard with the face protection on to be able to look down. Now this new vest, as you may have seen, I did a video on, this is the Haley Tack vest, and it's absolutely fantastic. It was such a good purchase. It was expensive, 150 notes, which when you actually look at it, there's not a lot there. But anyway, let's go gung-ho and get in there. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> I tried. Woo! That's one baby. Move back five meters, okay? Oh yeah. Which one, which one? Yeah, there's a couple on the left, far left. I can see him. He's behind that pyramid. What, the far one? I'm pushing up. Oh, I see him, I see him. He's hit! Full auto, baby! Suck on that! Come on. As I've mentioned in many of my other previous videos, what I find really amazing about Airsoft right, is right, right. there is a real team camaraderie, and even though you, the, the yeah, majority of these guys, because remember there's about 42, 43 players on each side, even though there are small groups that tend to stick together, oh, like me, Dave and Steve, tend to play together, but once one of you dies or you get separated slightly, you, you do end up out on your own and it can be quite difficult sticking right, together right. all the time. But it's it's such a good thing that you you can literally just, you know, be, be near a tree and there's a guy next to you and you can communicate with each other and, you know, there's that there's none of that 
we, I don't know you or anything like that. And uh, even at the start area, you can just go up and talk to other people about different weapons and, and, and what kit they've got. I really find that amazing because a lot of the online community, such as Armour and other things I used to play, and, and squad, the, the community is fucking toxic. It's terrible. And uh, SOF really has been a, a breath of fresh air for me. And as I mentioned before, I'm really am glad that I've got into this sport. I wish I'd done it years ago. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's there. Got it. Hit! Headshot. You can medic me. Oh, I can't talk, can I? Oh, fuck, I'm dead. Shit. <laughs> it's the immersion, man. <laughs> I'll be looking for that for the next 10 minutes. You should have taken piss. So, we have a bit of drama. No, yeah. M4 Warthog is misfiring and the MOSFET keeps going red, a little red light on which means it's not getting voltage even though it's a brand new battery. It's as dead as a witch's tit. So Saxon is going to lend me his new toy. I don't really want to take his new toy out because I think he should take it. But that's what brothers in arms do. <laughs> Brothers in arms. I've got to say, you're looking very Gucci there, Mr. Porter. Yeah. There she is. No, I didn't stock out. Right, well, let's go chrono it. Cheers. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, I kind of like that is. Yeah, it is like an extra clip from the hour. I come here and say that was it. And the fact that. You're the that... guy that I looked at centre. Yeah. Yeah. You were behind yeah. one of them bunkers. Yeah. And I could see every VV going through the gap. I don't know exactly where he was. And he still ran up to you. Yeah. Oh, no, like, right then. Scorpion it is. So to fill you in on just some of the issues that have taken place today during this video, my M4 is kaput due to the MOSFET being knackered, so that's out, gone. And Steve's got this Scorpion that he lent me, it's brand new out of the box, and we had this chronoed up at uh, patrol base, so we're all good, but of course you have to chrono when you come onto the site. And uh, what unfortunately we're about to find out is that it's over by 10 FPS, and yabba dabba do here won't let us take it on. So. Steve says, oh, I know, I've got another spring. Let's put the original spring in it, which puts it way under, way under 320, I think it is. Turns out he's forgotten the spring. So, <laughs> can't bloody use it. And then after that, well, after that, I decided I was going to borrow his 911. Or 1911 before all you unicorn left-wing social justice wankers out there keep shitting your knickers like you do on, on fucking Reddit, saying you need an investigation, get the police involved because I've named it. Fuck off, bellends. I'll call it whatever I want. It's a sausage 911 fanny munching machine. Whatever it is, I'll call it. Tough shit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're best off not knowing. Anyway, so I borrowed his 911, and it turns out he's lost one of his mags, and the other mag isn't working. It's <laughs> just like, Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll get a higher gun. So Marshall's tell me, yeah, go up to the hatch and ask for a higher gun. So I go up to the hatch, I ask for a higher gun, and she goes, Hey, love, I'm only here to cook the sausages. I don't know nothing about no guns. Blah, blah, blah. It's not my job. Nothing to do with me. Blah, blah, blah. Go speak to Andy. Well, Andy who runs it is out playing. Can't get all of him. You're trying to find eight, one person out of 85 people on the field though wearing camo. It's, it's a bloody joke. So I had to knock it on Ed. Fucking talk about a shit day, but that's airsoft, I guess. I should have had a backup. Yeah, maybe next time. <coughs> I'll bring out the saw. Put some mag lace on this. That. Please take the death leg off. Also, when you're dead, please carry it off the roof instead of on your arm. I'm dead, but I'm rebombing. Why? At least it went bang. 
Change. Uh, I, think I, I think I know what it is. What? I'm running two eights. I put two eight BBs in it. No, but he, he put some more BBs in yeah. inside them. Yeah, but we had it chronoed at shop. Don't we? So having gone out with just the pistol, it it really was no good because in the end I ended up just having one magazine and as you can imagine with uh, is it 15 or 18 shots in this thing I just haven't got the range yeah you could be sneaky beaky but it just felt like today was just one of it's just one of those days in airsoft and you know I have got a PX4 Tokyo Maru pistol which I just never bring because you never think it's going to be that bad it's not a huge issue at the end of the day I mean um Dave, the technician's already says, oh, just bring it out to shop. We'll sort all that out for you with the MOSFET, MOSFET, whatever it is. Well, it's just, it's nothing. But it's one of those things where the slightest little thing can absolutely ruin your day. So really, it comes down to planning and knowing, bring a backup weapon just in case. Even if you bring two rifles, I know it just means the whole car's full of kit. But it is what it is. And um, in future videos, you will see, um, I'm going to be taking trying to get three cameras out on the weapon so we get a bit more interesting diverse footage and that's another thing i'm going to be looking at plus i've got a new weapon coming out of the box very soon i'm sure you can already guess what that's going to be but that'll be coming real soon so what i think i'll do in the rest of this video i actually got the marshall's jacket went round and i just got some random footage of people playing so really this is going to be of interest to if you want to have a look at some of the kit and the weapons and the sort of things that these guys are using out there this is an opportunity for you to have a look and if you were there on the day Give us a thumbs up, subscribe and say hello. Let me know what you thought about the day. Overall, I, I really, really enjoyed it. The weather actually made it more interesting. Having the, the Peltor XPIs on, being able to hear crystal clear all the way around you, just fantastic. But we need to sort out these mics on the headsets because it's just a bloody nightmare. With it. Can you hear me? Come hear me. Oh, fuck off. Don't want that. It's not very tactical, not very enjoyable, just completely pissed everybody off. But anyway, so I'm going to leave you with some footage now from today. So I hope you've enjoyed this yeah, a little. Okay. So it's Plus sort of, eight, of it's been chopped up, this video, really. I know it's not really been the most exciting, engaging video, but as I said, that will change when I get three cameras. But in the meantime, I've been Paraplayers, and this has been Up at Patrol Base, Proving Grounds, and another Airsoft video. And some more interesting, I promise you videos coming real soon including videos on pyro and smokes and some goodies thanks for watching i'll see you in another video real soon from parablaze bye bye yeah, sure. oh marshall come on have a break there's three right at him right at him mate let me go down another word there's three go right. on it's right at the marshall end. coming through it's got like a higher mask on Marshall, Marshall coming through. Guy down there saying he's, he's hit one of you three times in the face. I've not been hit. Oh, I'm only, I'm only telling you. Guy at the other end is disputing. Says he's hit one of the guys three times in the visor. I'm only going by what he says. I ain't, I'm not a prop, I'm not a Marshall, this guy's a Marshall. Yeah. Right. I mean, I definitely am taking one of the fucking in. I'll quite happily take one. Scott, can you see anything if you peer over the barrels? Guys! Nothing at all. Yeah. Oh, the little. Ah, uh, right. Just to stop it from going yeah. off like this. If I drop it, I'll just drag. One yard. So we need to go over there.
Sorry, Matt. It's okay. Fucking hell. My day is over. I was told to go ask at the hatch. I got to the hatch. Shit, it's, it's not my problem. I'm the cook. Why am I supposed to know where the weapons are? Go and ask Andy. Andy's playing. So get our gun. Brilliant. 25 quid down shitter. Hello. <laughs> Shall I go out in a blaze of glory? Pull the trigger and tell him everything. <laughs> <laughs> 